In this tutorial, we're going to look at creating lookups for our transaction table, so we'll be able to see the entity data from our entity tables. This way we can improve data entry and reduce user error by them not having to type in. Currently, in our transaction table of enrollments, we would have to come in and actually type in the course code and also select or type in the number for the student ID. The student IDs are an auto number, so so far we've got four students and the course ID is made up of an acronym of 10 characters to create a unique ID for each course. So we would have to remember what these are to actually type in enrollments. So what we want to be able to do is have some lookup lists so where this table here in enrollment looks up the data from our entity table. To do this we need to start with our relationship table and we need to close any open table. Because we're going to make changes to the structure of the database, we can't have tables open. So what we need to do first of all is actually remove the current relationships. So right mouse click and delete. And right mouse click and delete again. Sometimes if you still get an error, if you go right mouse click and go show all, if there are any shadow tables or links, they will appear as well. So what we're going to do is turn student into a lookup, looking back at the student IDs, and we can actually show their first name and last name. To create this, we need to go into the design of the table. We will go to the student ID, and we'll just use the lookup wizard. We're going to look up a value in another table. We're then going to look up students. We're also going to show this information in the lookup. So when they click on the down arrow, they'll see the student ID, the first name, and the last name. We don't want to see date of birth. We can order that list if we want to, but I'm going to leave it in its default order. And I want to show the first field. So this is what they'll see when they click on the down list. And they'll be able to scroll through as the list gets longer. This is the available field that we're going to do it in. Click on next. And it's going to be student ID finish. We need to now save this. So when we go into the runtime view now, we can now look up the student ID and select a person and their corresponding primary key will be in the foreign key field here. Now to do courses, we follow the same process. Remember to push escape to delete any data in there. Go back into the design of the table. Once again, select lookup wizard, next. Select the correct table you want to look up. Select the field, I want the course ID and the title. Click on next. I want to sort this table by course ID as the year eight, nine, 10, 11 courses will be in order. And then I want to see, once again, the primary key. Course ID, course ID, finish. And then save this. So now in the runtime view, I can easily enter in data by selecting one and then selecting the other to enter in data. Saves the user typing in all the information. The only problem now is I need to close this table and then reinforce my referential integrity. So I'm just going to right mouse click and go show all. Now I can see all the links. Right mouse click the lookup line and edit the relationship and just enforce that integrity now. And the same with this one here. Now that referential integrity is done, we can now go back to the enrollments table and enter in some data. So I can actually add El Marsden into the year 11 IPT course and go to the next record. I can then also enroll El Marsden into, say, a drama class. But if I try to enroll El Marsden into the Year 11 IPT course again, it gives me an error, and this is due to the dual primary key. So this allows us to effectively enter data in using dual primary key. We can also ensure that we don't duplicate data and stop redundancy, and we reduce user data entry errors by not having them type into the database directly themselves. I hope you found this tutorial useful in creating lookups between tables and reducing user data entry errors.